Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. And today I'm going to complex number theory and is it really necessary in any mathematics? Well, especially in electrical engineering or uh, things like Fourier series. So let's begin. If you've studied mathematics uh, at high school or even at college and you've done uh, electrical engineering, one of those, either one of those, any of those, <laughs> Uh, you will have come across something known as de Moivre's theorem, okay? And this is what it states. Well, first of all, it's based on the garbage of Euler, or Euler actually is how it's pronounced. It's based on his uh, Euler's identity, which says e to the i pi is equal to minus one. Um, if ever there was a most laughable equation, that's that's probably it. Because, first of all, i is not a number of any kind. and We'll see now why this has been so misunderstood and also why it's not actually needed in mathematics. So let's begin. <clears throat> now, I had, uh, I used to uh, compile full, full A-level math exam solutions and this the following is a solution to an exam that was given in 2011. I don't remember whether it was April or some other time in, in 2011. But it said, use the Moivre's theorem to show that this expression is true, this equation is true, and then find all the roots of this equation in this form, sine q pi, where q is a supposedly a positive rational number. So um, the way the student is supposed to solve this is by using the garbage known as de Moivre's theorem. So I'm going to give you a link to this so that you can go over my solution and you can see how it's done using uh, the so-called theorem. But I'm going to show you now that it's de Moivre's theorem is more of a fraud than anything else. It's, it's really not a, a valid theorem and it relies, it relies bogus fact that i squared is equal to minus one okay so it relies on this garbage now we'll see we'll see in a moment um how we can do it without this nonsense because this isn't needed at all so um let's do this now and come back to my applet and so the short form is what you see on the left hand side, well, it's actually not on any side yet, but this is a short form of the binomial expression. And if we show both of them, uh, so we've got this now on the left hand side, left, left hand side, and in fact, that should be a five there, never mind. Um, so, and on the right hand side, we've got this. And now notice if you just expand this binomial, it will give you all these terms having a sign that is positive, right? And so the Moivre noticed that if one flipped the, the signs in these positions, so in position three, four, um, six, seven, etc., then this side would actually equal to what you see on the left here, right? So all the terms of this expansion cos x plus sine x are positive, with the exceptions being those indexed by 4n and 4n minus 1. And of course, the ones, uh, the ones that are positive are indexed by 4n minus 2 and 4n minus 3. But these are the general terms of the series that you see in front of you, or other terms of the series that you see in front of you with this general term, okay, in each case. So what's happening here? So the operation of squaring a radical exponent has no effect on the radicand. So if you see a radical like this, object here is the radicand, okay? Now when you square this expression here, it does nothing to the radicand. So it doesn't matter what you put in there. 
what you'll have on the left hand side is the object. Now the operation of squaring trusts that the radicant and in fact the radical itself object is a valid number. So it trusts that root minus one is a valid number, but it's not. It's more definitely not a number of any kind, for if it were, it would have to be either positive or negative. But root minus one has no determined sign. It can't, it has neither negative nor positive, okay? So now, why do some morons say that this is needed in electrical engineering? So let me just get rid of that, right? So let's see. So I've, I've said S of this, and what I mean by S of this is that one flips the, flips the signs in these positions, okay? That's what S of this means. So it's done because of the nature of alternating current. And so we negate every term indexed by 4n and 4n minus 1, which allows us to represent both AC signals. So what are the signals? that are being represented normally. It's normally the uh, impedance and the voltage, right? So those are the signals. So in electrical engineering, the voltage at a given time is equal to the peak voltage, which is V sub zero times cos of omega T, right? And so W or omega is the phase angle and T the time. And so if we take the real part of this expression here uh, because because we know that e to the i omega t n is supposed to equal to this right and so if we just take the real part we'll have the sum of the co of the uh, binomial coefficients that we we're interested in so we're representing uh, omega we're representing the peak voltage and the impedance okay so, and by the way, I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm just explaining to you how, how they reason around this and why it's garbage. So I by itself is positive, is considered to be positive, and one only deals with the signs, assuming that I squared is equal to minus one. But you don't really need this because as I showed you here, you already know which of the signs are going to be negative and positive. So you don't need I and, and this in fact works because of the trigonometric identity, identity, right? It works because, because of this. And I'll fix it right here. This is a five, okay? It works because this is true, right? That's the reason it works. It's got nothing to do with uh, complex numbers or any of that garbage that you're taught in complex numbers, complex number theory. So, um, next time you hear some idiot say, what would you do? What would electrical engineers do without complex numbers? Well, they'd manage just fine. And so would anyone else in mathematics who was using things like Fourier series, etc. So the reason these things work is due to the fact that trigono trigonometric, trigonometric identities are what make them work, okay? What you're seeing in front of you here is an identity and it will work if you apply this principle at the bottom exactly the same for any uh, binomial, okay? It can be a binomial of two, one, whatever, three, four, five, it doesn't really matter. You'll, you'll apply this as it is without any change. So that's pretty much it. I wanted to explain this to you, so I'll place a link to this applet so you can download it if you want it and also a link to this article which shows uh, the solution and how you go about using the garbage in complex number theory and the Moivre's uh, identity or equation. So this was actually asked in one of the CIE exams in 2011. It's, it was a further pure math module and I think it was from Cambridge international so uh, I've compiled many solutions to all the papers um, since that time in fact from the the years 2010 through to the years 2013 I compiled all the solutions full model solutions and 
I also explain what the markers look for in the students' uh, responses. So I'll place a link to this also. If you want to download it, you can. And that's pretty much it. My name is John Gabriel. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure you subscribe and tell your friends about this and spread the news. And also I'll place a link to my Odyssey channel where you can donate dollars or credits. Till next time, this is a new calculus channel. Goodbye.